The HK USP is the original tactical pistol. Despite being almost 30 years old, it endures in HK's catalog, virtually unchanged from its introduction in the early 90s. HK, like SIG, has a hard time letting go of old designs. HK has made several attempts to replace the USP over the years. The hammer-fired P2000 and P30 were iterations on the USP design, and the VP9 is a new striker fire design intended to fulfill the same role. But HK still makes the USP because the USP still sells. Because it's still pretty decent, and all their other pistols are hideous goddamn mongrels. The first model of the HK USP was the full-size variant chambered in 40 Smith & Wesson introduced in January of 1993. Very little about the gun was groundbreaking, not even for HK. The 40 Smith & Wesson cartridge had been around for a few years at that point, and both Glock and Smith & Wesson had multiple pistols available in 40 already. The USP is hammer-fired with a double-action, single-action trigger and a safety lever with decocker. Again, not a new concept. Both Ruger and Smith & Wesson already made hammer-fired, decocker-equipped pistols in 40 caliber by this point. The USP did have a polymer frame, unlike the aforementioned Rugers and Smiths. However, that wasn't new in the market, and it wasn't even new for HK. The only thing that was really weird about the USP is that it was so normal. At that point, HK didn't really do normal. Their handgun designs before the USP had all been a little quirky. The P9 was roller-delayed blowback, the P7 was gas-delayed blowback with a weird squeeze cocker, the VP70 was a staple gun high-point hybrid, and the HK4 was designed to swap between four different calibers for the truly patrician pistol fag. So the HK USP was a sensible gun, designed to appeal to law enforcement, military, and civilian markets. It was cheaper for HK to produce and didn't have any quirks to scare away militaries or LE agencies who tend to be a bit gun-shy around fancy new tech. And it worked. The USP found widespread adoption with law enforcement and was put into service with the German Bundeswehr in 9mm as the P8, replacing the Walther P1. Initially, the USP was available in 9mm and 40 Smith & Wesson full-size variants. The magazines are made entirely of plastic and have a standard capacity of 15 rounds in 9mm or 13 rounds in 40 Smith & Wesson. Given the size of the USP, that's not very impressive. The full-size USP is bigger than a full-size Glock in every dimension, but comes in at minus two rounds for the same calibers. The USP has a proprietary tactical rail to accept lights and lasers. Proprietary stuff is generally unforgivable unless you're the first to market with it, in which case I guess you get a pass. The USP was one of the first, if not the first, pistols to have a tactical rail on the dust cover, so it's not really their fault that Picatinny ended up winning the format war. Glock, Smith & Wesson, and SIG, on the other hand, introduced proprietary rails on their guns five years later, by which time it was no longer okay. In 1995, the USP and 45 ACP was introduced. The 45 variant has 12 round metal magazines that also extend below the grip a bit. Once again, not that impressive given a 13 round capacity for a Glock 21 and 45 ACP, but boy were they trying. In 1996, HK introduced the USP Compact, which is compact compared to a crew served weapon, but if you're going to commit to this much carry, you can do a lot better. The real meat of the USP series is in the full-size variants. The tactical variant is available in 40 and 45 and has a threaded barrel, adjustable suppressor height sights, and an improved trigger. The expert variant is a long slide with target sights and the improved trigger. The elite variant is even longer and only available in 9mm and 45 ACP. All of these variants are ridiculous to about the same extent, but they are very cool. All USPs, regardless of size or shape, can have the safety configured for different behavior or handedness. The standard V1 configuration is double action, single action with a manual safety decocker lever. The lever can be flipped up for safe, pushed down to fire, or pushed down past the fire position to decock the hammer safely. The V3 variant is decocker only and has no manual safety setting. This is the variant you want, but if you get a V1 pistol you can convert it to decocker only yourself. The V7 variant is double action only with no safety or decocker lever, perfect for those police departments that are so scared of their officers shooting bad guys that they would prefer they shoot bystanders instead. The V9 variant has a safety lever with no decocker function. The gun is still double action single action though, which makes this trigger really fucking stupid unless you just love the manual of arms of a vintage CZ or Jericho. Lastly, the USP can be had with HK's LEM trigger, which is like a DAO hybrid system. I'm not a fan of the concept, but it's far from the worst configuration for the guns. At the very least, a LEM trigger will force you to learn to shoot. 
Variants 2, 4, 6, and 10 of the HKUSP are southpaw versions of the other triggers. I didn't mention them before since I don't believe left-handed people should be allowed to own HKs. Or really any gun. Or vote. Alright, let's dump some rounds. I have trigger time on the full-size USP in all three calibers and the compact in 9mm. I own a USP-40 tactical and also got some footage with a buddy's full-size 45 for this video. The standard USP is a pretty average shooter. The triggers are definitely nothing special. The double action is pretty typical and the single action is not great for a single action trigger. The supposedly improved trigger on the tactical doesn't make much difference as far as I can tell. I actually think the triggers on the well broken in standard USPs I've shot are superior to the tactical trigger out of the box. Maybe mine will break in over time, but currently it's not very good. The ergonomics of the USP, on the other hand, are pretty much perfect. The grip is perfectly proportioned and has excellent traction on the front and back strap, as well as nice grabby texture on the sides. The safety lever and slide release are easy to reach and manipulate, but they are not ambidextrous. The paddle style magazine release is ambidextrous, and it's pretty good. The original mag release has some shortcomings. It's a bit too short, and it tends to pinch your finger when you insert a magazine. You can easily install the extended mag release lever from the HK45 and it's a worthy upgrade. It gives you a little more purchase and also extends the lower part of the lever to ameliorate the pinching problem. The guns are pretty big and heavy which certainly helps tame recoil and the recoil spring has a nested buffer that really does seem to soften up the recoil impulse. The USP is a tall, top heavy design so it's a little more flippy than a Glock but still a really controllable gun overall. Overall, all configurations of the USP are pretty decent. The strongest selling point of the guns is that they are soft, pleasant shooters in all calibers, and that's not worth a whole lot on its own. The 9mm variants are kind of a joke. Whether full size or compact, the USP is way too big and heavy for a 9mm with such a low standard capacity. It is a soft shooting gun, but then again, every 9mm larger than a kel PF9 is soft shooting because it's fucking 9mm. Just sack up and shoot it. When it comes to 40 caliber, the USP stands out a bit more. If there's a 40 caliber pistol out there that shoots as good as the USP, I haven't found it yet, and I kind of have a thing for 40 caliber pistols. There are some pistols that make more sense on paper. A striker fired 40 like this Smith & Wesson Sigma SW40F holds more rounds in a smaller, lighter package. But it isn't pleasant to shoot, and you have to do more work to keep it on target. Even something larger and lower capacity like this Beretta 92 and 40 doesn't shoot as well as a USP, and it does so with one less round in a standard magazine. So if you really want a 40 caliber pistol because you have to, I don't know, shoot through auto glass or you live in California and want to maximize your 10 round magazine limit, the USP full size and compact in 40 wouldn't be bad choices. The only USP that's an outright good choice is the 45 caliber version. Yes, it's big. Yes, it only holds 12 rounds, but that's not far off from a Glock 21 and it's definitely more shootable. A USP-45 would be an excellent suppressor host, and it has one more party trick. Since the HK USP is made from enchanted Teutonic Moon Steel, it can survive higher round counts than maybe any other pistol ever made. You can do some reading on the tests the German military did, or read some apocryphal shit on the internet about range rentals hitting 6 billion trouble-free rounds, whatever. Hype aside, the USP is a very durable gun, and that overbuilt durability is what allows the USP-45 to shoot 45 super rounds with no modification aside from a heavier recoil spring. Your average 230 grain 45 ACP ball round hits less than 900 feet per second. It's comfortably subsonic and trundles through the air like a sideways Mack truck. A 230 grain load of 45 super can hit over 1100 feet per second. That's 9mm velocity with double 9mm bullet weight. A 45 Super sounds like a rifle round. The concussion knocked my camera out of focus and grays out your world a bit when you shoot it. Oh my god! Let's do two rounds. See if we can knock that fucker off. If you absolutely positively have to kill a charging grizzly bear with a handgun, accept no substitutes. And really that's the only use case for 45 Super. Personally, I would just get a 10mm, but the closest I ever got to a bear was at the Portland Zoo and it was asleep on a plastic rock. And knowing Portland, it was probably vegan anyway. Should you buy a USP? Probably not. Really, they're just too expensive for what they do. If you're buying it exclusively for the range, then all models of USP will be great. 
Your best bet is to find a police trade USP for cheap, like under 500 bucks, and don't worry about what caliber it is. These guns are famously durable, so don't worry about it being worn out either. If you do buy one of these, make sure you know what trigger configuration you're getting. It would suck to accidentally buy a DAO version of the gun if your heart was set on a decocker model. The aftermarket for the USP is also ridiculous. You can shell out a ton of money on upgrades that don't really do anything, if you want. Spare magazines are absurdly expensive, especially considering the 9mm and 40 caliber magazines are just plastic and feel about as durable as a fortune cookie. You can get the Jet Funnel Magwell extension, which requires the use of a translucent plastic Jet Funnel mags that hold 18 rounds of 9mm or 16 rounds of 40. Alternatively, you can get regular extended base plates. HK Parts sells magazines with pre-installed extensions on them for a cool 80 bucks. Several companies make adapters for the proprietary rail so you can use normal Picatinny compatible tactical lights. The best one is probably made by GG&G. Put that in a TLR1 on there and it looks pretty good. If you really want to be an operator, you can try to track down the old Insight M2, which was made specifically for the USP's universal rail. My buddy's 45 has one of these vintage beauties on it and it's actually pretty well designed for old tech. There's an on-off master switch and a finger switch. You can pretty easily hit the switch with your middle finger to turn the light on as you draw. It's not very bright, but the warm incandescent glow will remind you of happier days. The USP-40 Tactical that I have is probably the single worst variant of the USP. The only reason I bought mine was because I got it brand new for less than the price of a normal USP-40. And it says Tactical on it. My recommendation is to avoid most of the USP ecosystem. Get some mags and learn to love the sights that come on the gun. If you get a variant 1 or 2 gun, buy the adapter plate to convert it to decock only. The install isn't difficult. Just remember, dollars spent on ammunition are worth a lot more than dollars spent on upgrades. So here's the overview of my USP. It's a 40 cal tactical model, which means it comes with a threaded barrel, raised match sights, upgraded trigger with over travel stop, and the word tactical on the slide. I replaced the barrel with a standard one off an old 40 caliber USP. I replaced the sights with normal three dot sights. I replaced the firing pin block spring with a slightly lighter one. I replaced the magazine release paddle with the extended one from the HK45. And I replaced the Variant 1 or 2 detent plate with a Variant 3 or 4 plate, so it is now decocker only. This gun has basically been fully detacticalized except for the trigger and the engraving on the slide. I like the gun a lot more this way. I'm still on the fence about keeping it or selling it. I don't use it for anything, but it is a lot of fun to shoot. Sometimes that's enough, but not usually. So if the USP is so unspecial and the Byzantine safety configurations just boil down to don't bother, why the hell is it still being produced and sold in 2019 with the same exorbitant price tag, tragically low magazine capacities, and stupid proprietary rail? The answer is video games and movies. Starting with Rainbow Six in 1998, the HK USP became the default tactical pistol for tactical video games. Rainbow Six is still one of the only video game franchises that ever gave a shit about 40 Smith & Wesson, but that's kind of appropriate given the love affair law enforcement agencies had with the caliber in the 90s. The USP-40 is the bread and butter sidearm for Rainbow operatives up through Raven Shield. The USP-45 Tactical is the starting weapon of the CTs in Counter-Strike. Solid Snake traded in his Mark 23 for a USP in Metal Gear Solid 2, before he traded himself out for Raiden in the latter two-thirds of the game. Fear features the USP-40 being dual-wielded to great effect. A Beretta 92 would have been more appropriate, but that's okay. Lara Croft used the HK USP match in the 2001 Tomb Raider movie, after which the Tomb Raider video games followed suit and ditched her Browning high powers for the USP match. What a shame. Even more shameful is that Valve thought the USP match would make a good pistol for the Metro cops to use in Half-Life 2. What were they fucking smoking? As far as movies go, Michael Mann put the HK USP in the hands of Neil McCauley in Heat and Vincent in Collateral. Jefferson Obex each carry a USP in the way of the gun. Ah yes, he even decocks it. God, I love that movie. Danny Archer uses a USP compact in Blood Diamond, Messner and Carruthers dump a shitload of rounds through their USPs and Smoke and Aces, and the USP probably featured in a lot of television shows too, but since TV is awful, I'm not going to talk about it. That's all I have for you today, guys. Thanks for watching, see you next time.
This is Flex Seal. I already plug your ears and cover your eyes. Hey! That's a lot of damage. That's a hit.